How you doing? This is Zach again. Did you ever think that sometimes the things that you're working on could actually be doing a detriment or could make you hit the ball worse? I think that's so true, especially in the short game. So we're going to kind of share with you a few of the biggest misconceptions that I see consistently on a daily basis with the students that I'm coaching with their short game. All right, number one is going to be you put your weight on your left side and it just stays right there the entire time. It makes a lot of sense because you would just think that, boy, I've just got just this fixed fulcrum that I'm just moving around. But in actuality, your weight flows from side to side a little bit. That's part of what allows you to move your body freely and rhythmically. So that's part of why I have my body track pressure mat out here. So if you take a look right here, I'm, I'm standing, there's 100% of the weight on my left foot, 100% of the weight on my right foot. And when I set up to hit a tiny chip shot here, I take a nice narrow stance, my weight favors my left side slightly, right? I've got around 65% on my left side. But here's the big key, because I see so many of you out there that once you get here, you stand there frozen trying to hit this shot. There's even a lot of you out there that will say that, boy, it's a lot like putting. You don't move your lower body at all. And I know it makes sense because you would think that's going to make me more consistent. That's going to make contact more predictable. But trust me, it's about motion. Just making fluid, consistent motion. That's the key to hitting consistent chip shots. So if you watch the screen here, you're going to see I set up. I'm a little on my left side, narrow stance. And as I move back and forth, you can see how my pressure moves. Now, it's really important, I'm not moving my body around from side to side in like a swaying fashion, but you see how the pressure exchanges from right to left, right to left, ever so slightly. My body's staying very centered, my head's not moving a whole lot on the backswing, it's staying pretty still, there's no sway, but you can see there's definitely some fluid motion there, and then I come up into my follow through. One of the biggest things I work on with a lot of players is even a little trigger to start your chipping. I'll show you some videos of some great players doing that, but you see how there's even a slight trigger to get my chipping motion started? So many of you out there, when you're not chipping the ball well, you stand over the ball frozen, you never look at the target, and then you go right into a jerky, stabby motion. Okay. So we want to get that fluid motion. I might start off, I make a couple practice swings, I'm looking at where I want, to, I want to see my ball land, I'm moving back and forth rhythmically, the club is touching the ground right where my, my imaginary ball would be, and then I walk into it, I take one look, and then we go ahead and hit it. And you saw there as I was moving, you see there's a little bit of fluidity to my pivot just because my body has weight and as I turn it back and through there's going to be some some forces on the ground that are happening but definitely do not stand there frozen just thinking it's a putting motion right that's obviously true in putting we don't move the lower body but in chipping and short game stuff it's fine to move your lower body so that's the biggest misconception number one that I see all right so misconception number two is going to be keep your head down okay and once again, it makes a lot of human sense because you would think that the better I could keep my head down and not look up, the better I'd be able to get this little tiny swing to hit the ball every time and I'd get rid of my chunks and my skulls. Okay, but I'm going to show you some footage of the best players in the world and I don't do that. You're going to definitely see they definitely don't do that because they chip the ball a lot better than I do. Tiger Woods. Sevi Ballesteros. Steve Stricker. Kevin Na. And Jordan Spieth. But what they do, okay, because like we talked about this, this, this theory of kind of making motion, right? So I'm moving, my head's not moving on my backswing. But as I go to follow through, right, in order for my hips to release, and you see all my pressure goes almost fully to my left side, I'm around 90%, the body needs to extend and turn, even in chipping. 
Because there's a lot of you out there that think, okay, I, th I know that for full swing. I know not to do that anymore for my full swing, but my chipping, right? That's not the case. I need to hit it and stay right there, keep my eyes on the spot where the ball was, but I'm telling you that's not true at all, okay? You'll be much better served while I know I'm trying to hit the ground in that exact spot where the ball is. I'm doing that in a way to where my body is just naturally turning and extending and moving up, okay? And that's exactly what we want you to do also. Turning, extending, and in order for that to happen, you see there's a little rise to my chest and a little rise to my head, and it actually occurs right at the ball. Now we're not just looking up and doing anything like that and the club's not hitting the ground. Every time I do this, my club touches the ground right where the ball is, but then my body continues to pivot and move. So it would look something like this. And you can see that's the most natural looking thing in the world. But when I started, my body was down here. And when I finished, now my body's up here. So there's a slight pivot. There's a pushing forward of the hips and an extension to the body upward. So quit telling yourself that you looked up after you make bad contact. That's not exactly what's going on. So misconception number three, and I see this the most often with actually better players because they know a lot about the swing and they know a lot about impact and they think impact with a full swing is the same as impact with a chip shot. And it's not exactly the same, okay? Like you would think in a chip shot that we hit the ball first and then we hit the ground just after, like you would in a regular golf shot. But that's not the design of how we chip the ball. I've got my AccuStrike mat out here and you can see when I take a swing, it leaves a nice divot. You kind of see where my club touches the ground first. Um, the design of a sand wedge, right? I've got a Cleveland RTX. I've got a mid bounce, nine degree bounce wedge. I'm trying to land that bounce about an inch to an inch and a half behind the golf ball, believe it or not. Okay, that's part of why you don't want to be one of those people in thinking you need to hit the ball first where you get a ton of weight forward and you get your hands forward and you're thinking, boy, as long as I hit the ball before I touch the ground, I'm going to be just perfectly right off. So I kind of did that there and I'm telling you, that's not a functional chip shot. It's way too low. I've got the leading edge digging in. Not that we don't use the leading edge from time to time, but I wouldn't do it with that type of setup. It's much more consistent if you can consistently kind of land the bottom of the club or that bounce about an inch behind the ball and then it does exactly what it sounds like it glides or it bounces right through impact collects the ball hopefully right next to your target so when i go to hit this take a look I'll do a practice swing watch where my club touches the ground so that was not perfect contact but it was darn close that would have been a very nice chip shot with where the golf ball was, you can see where the club actually touches the ground first. So if you could get that in your mind's eye that, okay, I'm trying to take a swing where my body moves fluidly back and forth, and then the club bottoms out just in front of the golf ball. You'll actually hit more consistent shots and you'll start to use the bounce on your club. Once that happens, you're going to see a lot more consistency. You're going to get rid of some of your chunks and some of your skulls. So I hope some of these short game tips help you out. They definitely are things that I see people struggling with because I hate to see somebody working on something and trying to do something that's actually making them worse. So don't be one of those people. Take some of these tips, go out to your local short game area, apply them and see if you don't start chipping the ball much better. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you really liked it, feel free to subscribe or give me a thumbs up. I love hearing from you guys too, so definitely drop a comment with any questions or concerns. But if you really want to get a lot of my content that's not on YouTube, I have an email list. All you need to do is click the link below, put your email in, and you'll be getting all this content for free that nobody else gets on YouTube. Lessons from me that come out almost every other day. I'll talk to you soon.